Greetings, Greg here again with another video helping you transform businesses, helping you transform your life. In this video, we're going to take a look at computed fields in Odoo. And so in the previous videos, we've been building up to this. In the, in the last one, we looked at related fields. And so in this one, we're going to look at computed as a very powerful to uh, topic and gives you the ability to create a lot of powerful custom solutions. So like always, please uh, click like, click subscribe, and please comment below if uh, you've used computed fields and some of the things uh, that you may have used computed fields before. And so let's get started. And we're going to kind of take off from where we did before. So if, if uh, you don't understand related fields and you're confused about how views work at all and those kind of things, probably want to go back a couple of videos in this playlist. Uh, the one previous to this related fields I will link to above. But um, here we have basically our vet example and we have our animal. And uh, for ex uh, birthday is one of the fields that we added. And if we come here to our code here and we go to views models, I'm sorry. Notice that we have a birth date here and we can get to that by Go, coming in here and clicking on Fido and we can see the birth date up here. So, so the birth date is in the animal record, but what if we wanted to see the age of the animal? And that would be a very common example is that they don't want to have to calculate in their heads what the age of the animal is. So we're going to use a computed field to calculate the age. So, and if you stay till the end of this video, we're going to have a bonus and I'm going to show you how to then show that age right here in the list view inside of the customer record so you can see the age of the animals here in this tree view. So I'm going to save that for the end. Now uh, to get started what we're going to have to do is create the actual field that's going to hold the age. So we basically just do that by coming in here and we can type age equals fields. Dot. Now you're always going to use the value type that your function is going to return. So if we're creating in a compute field that's going to return a string, then we would want this to be a string. If we're returning a date, then we would re want to return a date. That might be like if you wanted to say in two weeks something would happen and you wanted to compute that, then you might have this as a date. But age is going to be a float uh, variable because we might not, we might want to say 32.2 kind of thing, for example. So we do the float in parentheses, and now we say compute equals, and we put the name of the method that we want to use to actually do the computation. So I'm going to call this one com underscore compute age. And in Python, underscore usually just is a, a symbol of that that's a local method, a private method. It's, a, it's loosely enforced. It's not like Python enforces that, but it's kind of a convention is that underscore means that that's going to be private. So now what we need to do is write that method that's going to actually do this computation. So we come down here and we have to create a whole new method. So we type def compute age self. So that's always going to be self, which basically means it's going to have its own context of that object, this object that's going to be created. So for when an animal gets created, that record gets created, it's basically going to pass that record in, in, in here. And so if there's multiple records selected, it'll automatically pass a collection of records, which is really nice. And that's why we have to write this in such a way like this, where we would say for rec and self. And that means we want to process all of them because we might have it in a list, for example, or we might pull a group of records. It's not just one at a time. And we might do these. So then we want to make sure that the birth date actually exists. So we say if rec dot birth date and put a colon. Now we can do our calculation because we know it has a value. And we're going to say rec dot age equals. And now notice that this is matching this here. And we're going to say fields.date.today. So this is going to give us today's date minus the birth date. Like that. 
and then we want to divide that by uh, 365. We're basically getting the number of days here and then we're going to divide that and we have to use a function called time delta days equals 365 and you can get a little more fancy than that you can actually put 2. Point, 0.2425 which is basically a leap year-ish way to calculate it but this is going to give you a really close uh, estimate to age based upon birth date like that and so that's really all there is to that but we are going to want to come up here and make sure that we put a from date time import time delta otherwise you're not going to have this function uh, right here and uh, everything that you need so this is going to do that part of it now we want to also have a an else in here where we want to basically say if that's not true we're just going to say age equals zero so obviously zero is just going to be say we don't have an age it's just going to uh, make that zero now what we can do is go ahead and hit refresh here now we don't have anything to really uh, compute age is not defined Oh, and I caught that myself really quick, is what happens with uh, the way that Odoo works is it has to go through and process these fields uh, in, a, in a way that the framework understands. And this method is after this field definition. I'm going to move it up like this. Move it up here. So it's above above these. And that has to be there. And now we will restart. And that catches me every once in a while <clears throat> that we have to have our methods here above our field definition. It's because that Odoo's doing some doing things in the framework to find this. And the first pass at least is not going to be there because it hasn't gotten that far in the compilation yet. So now if we come in here and we click on one of these, we're going to see that we have a age that's calculated. Now, what's going to happen though, if we come in here and do this again and change this, say that, notice it's not changing it in real time right here. If I hit save and go back, it's still not seeing it because it's really not saved yet. It's not until you hit save that now it's actually doing that computation to recalculate that field. So now if I come back in here, we'll see that the age has changed. And if I come back and let's go back far, maybe to there, save and go back in, that is now changed. Now that might be the behavior you want, but I'm probably guessing that you probably want most likely for this to update on the fly. And that's uh, not hard uh, to do. And to do that, in this case in particular, it's super simple. We can just come in here and we do an at api.depends. And in parentheses here, we just put the name of the field that this computation depends on. And we can just put in birth date. And so whenever birth date changes here, that means it's going to fire this compute age off and force age to re recompile. Otherwise, it's only going to do it when you save. It doesn't make it as uh, good for an interface to understand. So that's all you have to do. Now I'm going to hit restart everything. And we'll come back in. We'll see that this will have a lot better behavior for what we would expect. And so we edit. Come down here. Go to Fido. 1.74, let's change this back newer, October, 0.74. So anything that changes, you'll see it changes immediately now. And when you save it, of course, it's going to save it and save it and so on. Now, what I had promised you is I'm going to show you how that we can put this down here uh, in so that you're not having to look at it, at it uh you know, dig in to see the age. And it's pretty easy. We can do that by coming back to the same source code uh, that we had before in our views. And notice here that it says fields 
uh, animal IDs. And so we're basically just saying show the default view. We could actually set up another view, uh, a tree view for animal, and it would use that tree view here. And in Odoo's framework would do that automatically. But we can also do an inline view just as easy. So I can get rid of that and come in here and, and say this. And then what we just have to do is say that we want a tree here. So we can say tree, oops, like this, and the tree like this. So basically we're, we're wrapping this whole thing in, in a tree view like that. And we could actually say here, string equals animals. So it'll put a, a label on it. And now I'll just copy and paste these because it's super simple that way. And you know what it's going to be. Let's just put the name and the birthday like that. And when we refresh and come back and shift refresh here, the ages of the animals should show up here. And it'll title the, the, the grid to animal, animal name, birthday, like that. And, there, and that's the birthday. Ah, I wanted to show the age, right? Ah, well, it's the same thing. Not a problem. We just come back and change this to age so we can show that computed field. And just like that, we're going to have age here instead computed uh, based on the birth date that was provided. So there's that. Not very hard. Hopefully this series of videos has helped you get an understanding of Odoo architecture. If you're serious about Odoo development, I would highly encourage you to check out my Mastering Odoo development series. I'll have a link down it below. And if you're involved in an Odoo integration project or customization project, and you'd like some help and some assistance uh, with expert developers, check out my Odoo Inner Circle uh, project. And I think that uh, you will find that it can be very helpful in getting you the results you need, meeting requirements. So thanks for watching. Please uh, leave a comment down below if you've used computed fields or you had any suggestions on how they can be used uh, to customize O2 uh, for your business. So thanks for watching.